This is the time of year when many start thinking of New Year's resolutions, things like lose weight, eat healthier, some physical health goals, but we can all resolve to improve our mental health as well. I'm with CU Medicine psychologist, Dr. Angelo Alago from CU Medicine Family Medicine Depot Hill in Broomfield. Thank you for joining me. Happy to be here. First, those dealing with behavioral health or mental health concerns, they aren't alone. What are some common mental health concerns? Yeah, um, so just looking kind of broad spectrum, in any given year, uh, about 20% of adults in the U.S. can expect to deal with some sort of mental health concern. So just right off the bat, one in five people is struggling with some aspect of their mental health at a level that meets criteria for a diagnosable mental health disorder. That's not even including people who are struggling with stress or just kind of garden variety anxiety or decreased mood, things like that. People that set New Year's resolutions sometimes put a lot of pressure on themselves. What are some techniques to set attainable goals, something that won't cause anxiety or too much stress? There's some mixed research on this. Um, there are some studies that seem to suggest that New Year's resolutions in general aren't that good of an idea. Uh, and then there are some, there was one that just came out last year that indicates given the right kinds of goals, they can be successful. So let's, let's talk about that. Broadly, we can categorize goals in approach goals and avoidance goals. Approach goals are things that you want to move towards, things that you want to increase, things that you want to do more of. And avoidance goals are ones that are phrased in terms of, I want to stop this. I want to do less of this. What we consistently see is that those approach goals are way more likely to be successful than those avoidance goals. So setting yourself up to succeed probably starts with finding something that you'd like to do more of rather than something you'd like to do less of. But what's the direction that most of us tend to go? right? Wanting to get away from things. Um, in my experience and in my, in my work with patients, I will never stop singing the praises of small goals. I think that having really, really small objectives, little chunks that together lead to that change that you want to see happen, again, is setting you up to succeed. Um, I, I like to put it this way. If you have you know, we always hear that joke about like what weighs more a pound of feathers or a pound of lead, right? In a similar sort of way, if you have a bucket of failure and a bucket of success, that bucket of failure is going to weigh more. An equivalent amount of uh, failure compared to an equivalent amount of success, that failure is going to hit harder every time. So what we need to do is we need to sometimes artificially create opportunities to succeed. So what this looks like in practice, I'll give an example from my own life. Whenever I'm making a to-do list, the first uh, thing that I check off of my to-do list is the last thing I write on my to-do list, which is finish writing this to-do list. So I start off, again, it's kind of artificial, but I start off with a success. This is a thing where, okay, I completed a thing and I get to check it off and I get that little bump of happy hormones and neurotransmitters and all that stuff. So small goals that are focused on approaching something, increasing something. The other thing that I'll say here, if you can connect a desired behavior with something that you're already doing, that has a dramatically increased chance of happening. So what I always like to encourage people to do is if you have a goal to increase your physical activity, it's a really common one, consider Every morning or every night or both, after you brush your teeth, do a few push-ups because you're connecting it with something that you know is already going to happen. What are some good examples of a behavioral health or mental health resolution? So whenever I look at like behavioral health goals or mental health goals compared to health goals, it's a bit unhelpful to look at those as separate. So increasing exercise, for example, another common one that folks tend to do is as much a mental health goal as it is a physical health goal. Um, and I think that's important to keep in mind by doing things like eating better, being more active, you're gonna be helping your mental health just as much as you're helping your waistline, you know? Um, that being said, if we're looking at kind of the emotional aspect of things, I think there's a lot to be said for the value of openness. And what do I mean? The idea of being open to new experiences, 
the, the idea of being open to your own internal experiences, whether that's thinking about something that you've been avoiding thinking about, or whether that's allowing yourself to feel sad when it makes sense to feel sad, allowing yourself to feel angry when something makes you angry, rather than trying to fit into these molds of, I should feel this way. That is a great thing that all of us can do more of. And that's a great example of an approach goal, right? I want to more often not censor myself, not censor my emotional experience. I think that that's a really great one that all of us could benefit from, just more openness. You can learn more about Dr. Alago and CU Medicine Family Medicine at cumedicine.us. Thanks so much, Dr. Alago. Thank you.